So in this case, we've got this example of the, um, the patients with renal problems, and then um, uh, the treatment is fish oil, uh, olive oil, and mineral oil. And then we want to see whether there's wha if there um, being either male or female makes a difference in terms of your response. So you've got three possible tests that you can do. One is to test for the, your treatment overall. Another one is to test for the effect of gender overall. Another one is the interaction of treatment by gender. So do, does, does one gender react better to treatment than another? Which can be important too because um, if, it does, if, if it's not gonna be good for one gender or the other, it's good and if it's good for the other, you can be selective about how you administer that treatment. You don't waste time you know, treating, uh, giving one group a treatment that's not effective. So let's just see, um, here are the differences graphed. At this point, I'm not even gonna be calculating T, T, uh, F uh, tests or any doing any P values because at this point, if you're doing this kind of thing, you should be doing it with a, uh, a nice sophisticated computer program or you should be going to a professional who knows how to handle these situations. Anyway, um, here are the differences between the patients who got mineral oil, olive oil, and fish oil. It looks like fish oil ha does a little bit better than the other two groups. The other two groups are kind of like pretty much on the same level. We look here, it looks like females are reacting a little bit better. This is by, by the way, the, um, on the y-axis is um, GFR, so basically glomerular, glomerular filter rate. So basically a measure of, of kidney function. <laughs> this is actually much more interesting. Because this, and this is actually what you should look at first when you do this kind of analysis. You wanna see whether or not there's any kind of difference in the pattern of, rea of response as a function of your gender. And so if you look at this, anyone want to tell me whether they think that there's any difference in the way males versus females are reacting to um, uh, the treatment? Um, did someone say that again? What do you think? Yeah, but, yeah, regardless of treatment, right. So basically, um, what it says is that no matter what the treatment is, females are above the, the, uh, the males. And what it says is that, well, okay, you know, probably both males and females react the same way to the, treat to the treatment. And so you can give both of them and they'll both benefit. What this means is that there's no interaction effect. It means that one group doesn't react differently from the other group in terms of their response to the treatment, okay? Basically, most of the time you'll see this um, presented in an article as, as bar graphs. What I like to do is present it as a line graph or sometimes I even drawing lines in the bar graphs just to see if there's any evidence of, you know, just, just to see what the interaction effects are, okay? What you can see from the lines is that they're pretty much parallel. And if they're parallel, it says that, you know, no matter what, they're reacting the same way to the treatment. And so there's no interaction effect in this case. Let's take a look here. Any difference here? Okay. So in this case, it uh, really looks like, um, okay, males and females react pretty much the same way to mineral and olive oil, which, you know, and which is not too much. But it, lo it looks like females are rea responding much more to the fish oil. And so what would you conclude here in terms of treatment? Would you, would, could you treat them the same way or not? Yeah, and it actually it doesn't look like it's uh, working very much for, for males. So. <laughs> so basically what this tells you is that it's much more effective for females. And so it gives you an idea of what kind of, you know, it's like being doing market research. You, you get, you're aware of what kind of audience or what kind of, po uh, of population you want to direct your treatment to. So that's the value of doing this kind of analysis with more than two levels, more than two factors, or I'm sorry, more than one factor. You know, you can look at whether or not you know, one factor mod mod moderates or affects the, uh, say, your, your overall treatment. Okay. So as much as we can have repeated measures or like a before and after design in terms of t-tests, we can have the same thing in terms of an analysis of variance. And so let's see, uh, let's go back to the, um, the example we have of um, the diabetic patients and the education program. Um, one of the things about education programs and uh, you know, a lot of interventions you get in complementary medicine is that these things work pretty well before and after. 
So you, you, you see a really good response between before and after. So the thing is that if you look at it, you know, at the response like six months after, a lot of times you'll get something like this, where basically, okay, there's an there looks like um, these patients are they're showing a lower level of uh, A1C between before and after, but in terms of six month follow up, do you think it's still effective? Okay, they're basically back to the same level they were before, so it kind of says this, you know, I, you know, once the program ends, they really, mm -hmm. they really can't do anything on their own. You know, they basically backslide, and so you know, you need something else. You need some sort of reinforcement. You need some sort of follow up. But basically, the program on it, on its own doesn't work past, you know, the the um, the follow up uh, just after the uh, uh, the training program. That's in contrast to something like this, where, uh, da -da. so six months out. They're doing almost as well as they, they were at just after the treatment. So this gives you a lot more confidence that this education program is doing something for these patients. Okay? So like usually six months is kind of the, uh, the real trial. I mean, some people take it out to a year, but like six months is really the, you know, the, the real cutting point where you know, if you're not showing an effect at six months, then forget about the program. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me skip this. Um, I think I only have like about two more minutes, so let me just do one more thing, which is um, let's talk about multi-level uh, repeated measures and bef between and, and within comparison. So um, we're, go we're back to this education program. Uh, we have the before, after, and six-month follow-ups. Uh, let's see how well this does for males versus females. So again. It could be that ma females tend to be much more compliant. It might be that they tend to do better. They respond better to the treatment. So let's just see. In this case, let's say in this instance, um, would you say that there's any interaction between males and females? Are females responding better or worse than males? Uh, oh, OK. Sorry. Oh, I thought I fixed that. OK. All right, let's just say older, uh, older and younger. I'll fix it for next year. <laughs> yes, they're very similar, right. So basically, they look like almost like parallel lines. They're, like they're almost like one on top of the other. So you conclude here that basically males and female, I'm sorry, older and younger patients don't do any better. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't show a different response. Basically, they're pretty much, you know, um, they're, they're, they're parallel and they're pretty much one on top of the other. Let's see what I did here, okay. Um, so in contrast, what we've got here is, um, um, w what about here? Are, um, are they both compliant to the same degree, or are they different? OK. Yeah, so the older ones, sorry about that. Actually, I, I thought I had changed it so that it was the males who were non-compliant, but sorry about that. <laughs> um, but in, in this case, basically, it's the older patients who are not compliant. And so those are the ones who aren't benefited by the, the program. So it kind of tells you that you need to do something more with these patients. Okay, to make to make the program effective. So this is where th these, you know, where you look. At w if you look at the interaction effects, it tells you particular instances where you need, you know, where you're, you're where one group is doing better than the other, and the, the group that's not doing better maybe needs some additional reinforcement or needs a different approach. Okay. Um, let me just do one more thing. Um, okay. There are two problems with t-tests and f-tests, and one of them is um, the problem with normality. They're designed to handle normal, uh, normally uh, distributed data, and so um, basically, um, if you um, actually uh, a lot of times when you you look at uh, published articles, you find that it really looks as if the, the, the groups are not normally distributed and they're using parametric tests like t-tests and analysis of variance. And um, I've, I've, I've found a lot of instances where people have done this and, and technically um, their, their results are, are not correct. Um, one approach to do in, this, in an instance where you don't have normality, so in other words, the data are like skewed, like you've got outliers and things like that, um, you can use what are called non-parametric tests. And, um, these are kind of old-fashioned as well, uh, and there are two reasons for that. One is that non-parametric tests are not as, as powerful 
you're less likely to find a significant difference with non-parametric tests than you are with parametric tests. And the other thing is that no one's come up with pa non-parametric counterparts to things like multi-way analysis of variance. And so you're kind of limited to how you can use them. Okay. Now, question? yeah, question? So Um, it's only this w only when it looks like a bell jar because so even yeah I mean you, ha you, ha you analyze the entire group so it, it has to it has to correspond to like that bell shape or normal curve okay um, there are ways of getting around that which I'll hold for another lesson like you know but um, um, the other the other problem with um, analysis of variance especially repeated measures analysis of variance is that if you're missing data like if, if you have three time points and say someone's missing a, a time point two, then you can't include that person. That person has to be dropped. So one of the problems with standard analysis of variance with repeated measures is that missing data is a real problem. And that, you know, especially in the real life where y if you've got, a, um, say, a, a six month or a 12 month follow up, you can get a lot of loss to attrition. And so one of the problems of uh, repeated measures analysis of variance is that, that, well, that the fact that you lose patients because you have to drop them from the analysis. And what I'll just touch on is that current trends, there are a couple of different tests that have kind of been devised. They're kind of like offshoots or later develop or further developments of analysis of variance. And so in one case, mixed model regression allows you to include people who have missing data because it does a different way of calculating, uh, cal uh, calculating uh, correlation coefficients. And then there's another um, analysis, it's called generalized linear modeling, that allows you to, to um, do the same kind of things you, you can do with analysis of variance, only with skewed data. And you can do, you know, you can do repeated measures analysis of variance with, say, with, with data that are, that have outliers. So these are two things you're going to find more and more in the literature. And so I just want to touch on them because basically um, these are things that are not covered by most standard stat courses. Okay? And that's pretty much the end of my spiel. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Okay. Um, is St. Luke's Roosevelt still there? Tell me them. Are there any questions from that end? Okay. So you know everything about T-tests and analysis of variance, right? Okay. Can you ask it again? Because I, I couldn't catch it. Um, the first one is a little similar to that. Yeah, I can now. Okay. My question is about the, uh, so is there any test in Perlman to the uh, ANOVA for concatenant variables? Like they have, uh, you said ANOVA is more for continuous variables. Yeah. So um, that generalized linear model, uh, modeling does take care of dichotomous variables. So dichotomous is like a yes-no situation. So like, um, you know, uh, and you can use it either for repeated or non-repeated uh, situations. So that, that's, that's actually a good question because it kind of, um, with traditional ANOVA, you were restricted to continuous outcomes that were normally distributed. And generalized linear modeling allows you to do continuous skewed data and also places, uh, situations where you have yes, no, or dichotomous variables. So does that take care of the question? Um, I would say if, you're, if you plan on using this, you, you really should consult. Um, you need a, a stat program like SPSS or, um, or, or a SAS, and you also should go to a statistician because it can be really hairy to do some of these analyses. So okay. it pays to go. Um, I mean, if, if I had a, my gold bladder to take out, I would go to a doctor. <laughs> <laughs>